Friday, courage grows. Monday afternoon, Southern Comfort and Coke and some unknown poet's book of unknown poetry. The first dancer was dark skinned, red velvet wrapped around her breasts and sex, her breasts pushing hard against the small cups. She bumped and grind and jumped and shook and tried to get inside of us all, but I wasn't buying it. She had the wrong smile. It was like no smile. It was like hate with misplaced lips, a death mask grinning. She ended her show in a revealing split. The SC and Coke were going down smooth. I read a few poems that weren't half bad, one about an old man in a hospital trying to die with dignity. It was an old theme, but it had strength, honor. It worked. The afternoon was going to be OK. The second dancer came out of the darkness, like all other dancers before her, receiving only a small spit of applause. Young men with fake IDs and broken dreams, men who were nothing more than dreams, shadows of dreams, wet dreams, old dreams. The second dancer made me put the poems away, put down my drink. She smiled one of those, don't scold me, please hold me, smiles that young girls can have. She had it all, the smile, the eyes, the hair, the style. On any other woman, her eyes would have been crazy, lightning eyes crashing through the darkness. She danced. She flowed from the hips in a not so different from honey from the pot fashion. Her breasts were small, her legs long and solid. It all fit. She kept approaching a table where three young boys were sitting. She had them hard and anxious, their red faces caught in the blue bath of the lights. The music ended just as she dropped her G-string. She kept dancing, but no one missed the music. When she stopped, the audience died. They screamed and yelled and promised great things if only she'd come back on stage. I headed for the door. I was frightened. I had seen her. The woman I would kill for, die for, murder my mother for. She was perfect. Hair that I could wrap my soul in, eyes to catch my quickest breath, and a mouth to hold me tight. I ran away from the bar, a drink still on my table. I was afraid of her voice. I could not bear the thought of looking her in the eye. I ran. Monday ended and Friday came without much in between. I went back to the strip joint. I got myself a seat right up front. I had wanted all my, I had left all my books at home. I wanted nothing to distract me. I wanted to be pure. I was into my third SC in Coke when she came out. This time it was different. The audience was waiting. As soon as she hit the lights, the thunder rolled in to meet the lightning in her smile. The applause was so loud you could feel it. It was the heartbeat of some giant beast, and the beast was lust. She had it all. The audience went insane. Men gone mad with lust and desire were laying on the floor. She gave it all to them. Her eyes betrayed no one. Her lips fulfilled every man's dreams of kisses. She danced to embrace us all. She took off her clothes and danced, totally naked, her body glowing like some white-hot phosphorus cloud, the music roaring, the audience lost in frenzy, my drinks going down right, and then it happened. She came to my table. She wasn't dancing any longer. This was a death march. She was marching right into my soul, pulling it out of me. With her breasts, her legs, her sex, her eyes on mine, I couldn't move. She was inches away, her eyes like iron bars around my soul, and it was hers. She could have it all. Her eyes stayed on mine, and I was helpless. I was dead and alive. Minutes passed. She made love in front of me. Her eyes didn't move. They nailed me down. The music ended. She turned away to the thunder, and I heard her whisper, fuck, they only want to look at my eyes. The lights came up, and she was gone, the bar almost silent. What was there to say? She had stolen the tongues of the audience. She had ripped out their hearts. They were the lucky ones.